Hello lovely people, welcome back to the channel. Today we are going to learn how to loop an alembic cache, that's .abc file in particular. And by loop, I mean the one where you cannot tell which is the start and which is the end. So if this is what you were looking for, stumbled upon, or simply got suggested, well then my friend this is fate. And here is how it's done. Open a new scene in Blender and nuke everything. Import your Alembic cache file. Adjust the playback frames as necessary. I like how it looks from frame 50 so this is the new range I will stick to. In order to achieve this feat of looping an Alembic cache, we are going to use the easier method of taking the help of geometry nodes. I'm pretty sure you could use a python script to do it as well but we avoid snakes for now. What we basically want to do is make sure that our mesh looks the same in the last frame as it does in the first frame using some kind of transition. Before we go about doing that, we need to be able to switch the mesh from its normal animation sequence to the transition. Add a switch node and change it to geometry from the drop down if it is not already on it by default. And make sure the group input geometry is connected to false. You can obviously switch it around but make sure to edit the logic accordingly. Next, we need a criteria to control this switch which we do using frame number. You get it through the scene time node so add that. Drag out of the frame and search for compare greater than or equal. We use a variable in the value for b so that 1 we can control it and second we can use it elsewhere. So search for value and plug that in b. I want the switch to happen in the last 5 frames, so I put 245 in there. You can tweak it to suit your taste. Connect the result to switch and let's just test it out with the lower frame number to see if it is working. Perfect. Now let's work on the more important part. Get an object info node. Why do we need this? To get the reference to the final transition state. That's why. So duplicate your alembic cache file. Open the modifiers tab and make sure in caps to click the number and make it its own instance before you do any changes. Cause if you don't, then the changes also happen to the original item, which we don't want. Here. Delete the geometry nodes modifier and in the mesh sequence cache expand time. Check overwrite frame and set the number to either your start frame which is 50 in my case or just one before that since for the perfect perfect loop the last frame should be the one before the first frame after which it starts again at the first frame. Go back and select the copy in the object info node. Now we have both the geometries, one from which we want to transition from and the other which we want to transition to. And we do this by sampling each point of both the geometries. So we start by adding a sample index node here and change it from float to vector since we are transitioning based off of that. Get a position node and attach it to the value. Similarly, get an index node and connect it where it belongs. Duplicate these three nodes so that you don't have to make the connections again and do this at the original geometry. Now let's make some space and bring in a set position node which is what we use to perform our magic. Connect geometry from it to true and attach a position node to the appropriate location. For the prelim to the mathematics paper, separate XYZ from the value of sample index nodes. Since the set position node needs offset, we need to determine how much to move each X, Y and Z to go from one mesh to another. And the simplest way to do it is to subtract. What's the destination? Put that on the top. Where are you starting from? Put that at the bottom. Repeat two more times for Y and Z.
Oops. Since we know the offset now, we can basically combine x, y, z and attach their value to the offset position, right? Wrong. We still need to control the transition in the last few frames. And this is how we do this. Add a scene time node and drag out from its frame to a map range node and make sure it is attached to value. Now, the from min should be the frame from where we begin the transition. So drag from the value at the top and attach it here. From max will be the last frame, so 250 for me. You need to adjust accordingly. Drag out from result and find a multiply node. Duplicate two more times and connect X, Y and Z to them. Finally, attach the value from these to the corresponding locations on the earlier made combined node. And that's done. Now when you hit play, your Alembic cache file should loop almost perfectly. You can tweak the frame values and other stuff to see if you get better results. This is entirely dependent on the animation you have and you might have to transition for longer or shorter duration. So make sure to play around with these settings to get the best result. And finally, a small tip for my viewers who are using Blender 4.1 and upwards. If you don't want to copy the original object to use as reference, then there is a new node in Blender 4.1 called Bake. In order to capture the required information, connect the original geometry from the group input to the geometry in the Bake node. Make sure the Still option is highlighted. Drag the slider so that the current frame is the one you want to bake slash record but you can see that the bake option is not accessible and the reason is that your blender project is not saved. Save it and the bake button should activate. Click bake to bake the single frame of information and now you can use the output from this node just like you did with the object info node. And that's it. Don't forget to like, share and comment on the video if it was helpful. And subscribe to the channel for more such content. See you again in the next one. Have a great day.